Hey guys, welcome to the next part in Let's Play Football Manager 2015 and this is the next part of the Aston Villa save and this is how the league stands as of February 2019. And as you can see, well, we're really punching above our weight. I have absolutely no idea how we've done this. Well, I do sort of. I mean, it's, it's the goals we've scored. We've actually scored a really large amount of goals. We've conceded quite a lot as well, to be honest with you. And this is kind of something which I've never really been able to shirk off. It's the sort of Brendan Rodgers last season approach where it's like, let's beat everyone by outscoring them, you know, and fuck conceding goals and everything. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter. Let's, as long as we outscore them, everything's okay. And as you can see in the, in the uh, league here, 13 wins, but also 8 defeats. Um, usually, I always have this sort of problem of drawing loads. I've only drawn 3 times, so it's clear that we're conceding too many goals. I mean, the goal difference is plus 7. I mean, it, don't get me wrong, it could be a hell of a lot worse. You know, look at the fellow promoted teams, Leeds. Uh, Reading actually are doing okay, to be fair to them. They're on 28 points. Uh, they should be safe. I'd be surprised if they went down. Um, I think yeah, I think it was us, Reading and Leeds, that's correct, yeah, um, who got promoted. So we're all actually too indecent. I mean, okay, Leeds are only two points off Stoke, but as of now, they are not in the relegation zone, so I'll let them off. Um, Chelsea again, just, I mean, this is probably how the season, uh, I'm sorry, how the top four, I think, oh, sorry, no, Liverpool are there. I'll take it back. Let's take that back. <laughs> I think that's how Chelsea will look um, at this stage in the real season in 2015. I think they'll be so far ahead that it'll just be futile in just even put, counting them in the league. They're in their own league at this point. I mean, they've won 21 out of 25. They've drawn two and lost two. They've scored 74 goals. That's insane. <laughs> uh, I mean, as you can see, they are just out and away the best team. And if they don't win the Premier League from here, I'd imagine if that was real, bookies would already have paid out on them. Uh, Newcastle are in fifth. Uh, I mean, we're still technically here in with a shout of a Champions League place which is stupid. I think it would almost be a bad thing if we got Europe. Generally, you don't want to be in Europe if you're just a recently promoted team, you know, following the whole second season syndrome idea. And you don't want to get too big too quickly. And I say that because I've just uh, been watching a documentary about Gretna. If you've never heard of Gretna, they were basically a Scottish team uh, who were taken over by a millionaire in 2002. And in uh, 2000, from 2004 to about 2008, they rose through every league. They went from the Scottish third division to the Premier League in, I think, three or four seasons. I've had many. I think it was four seasons. And um, they eventually went bankrupt. Uh, they, the owner had illness and so on and unfortunately died not long after the club went into uh, extinction. And uh, they unfortunately got too big too quickly, um, to be honest with you. They... But they were dangerous <laughs> to them. They were a danger to themselves. And uh, I mean, if you have Sky, there is a documentary on um, about their story. If you have Sky, go into uh, Sky Sports' uh, section. It's a great story. Um, that's as of the date of the upload of this video. It should still be in there. It's a fascinating story. If you call yourself a football fan, have a look at it. It's an awesome story. Uh, anyway, so I'm getting distracted. But that's a point what I'm trying to make that, you know, don't want to get too big too quickly. It might be the bet for the best if we start to tail off a bit. I know that sounds crazy, but you don't want to get ahead of yourself. And, you know, we have hit that 40-point barrier, um, which is very, very good at this point because we're practically safe. Of course, there is that magical 40 points. Everyone in the media talks about it. You know, if you're able to get 40 points, you're probably going to stay up. I mean, there's been a few exceptions here and there, but generally, 40 points or more means Premier League football next season. And... If we were to get relegated at this point, that would just be a complete disaster. I mean, that that is Armageddon equivalent disaster. <laughs> uh, so we, it shouldn't happen. But yeah, I think we are considerably better than what I actually thought we were going to be. So uh, transfers. Now, obviously, I've had to strengthen the team due to the fact that we have come up from the championship. I've let a lot of players go. I, in fact, also just to save money on the wage budget have let kids go kids are just gonna, not going to be good enough i'm not interested about the reserve team i just all the reserve team is there for is to um bring through the next 
sort of batch of youngsters. So I've let Gary Ekbonlahor go. He is now too old for me. He's well, he's in the look at that. He's in the Norwich reserves. I mean, <laughs> sums it up really, doesn't it? That's how good he is. Um, and the rest are all basically on free transfers. I've let a load of players go out on loan. These are potential youngsters. And we'll get to that in a moment. The only major sale I've done is this guy, who I believe is a youngster at the moment. Oh, oh is he? Is he? He's at Aston Villa. Eh, he's kind of young. Um, actually, no, he's not at all. He is at Aston Villa, apparently, in real life. I don't know if they've sold him or loaned him out somewhere. But he is awful. <laughs> it's called Ender Stevens. And the fact that I was able to get four and a half million pounds for him is nothing short of a miracle. He is awful. He average his average rating is like six point five. He's really poor, poor player. So I was quite happy to get rid of them. So the players were brought in then. So I've obviously had to think about youth. I always like to bring in good young players. Always you've got to. And this is the first one. This is Vinko Vardic, which is a fantastic name. Uh, midfielder, Croatian. Looks all right. Could do for with a bit of development. Potentially four star player. Potentially a key player. Um, I like the look of him. He's in the reserves at the moment. Let's see how he does. First major signing proper for the first team is Daniel Ayala. This guy is really good. Um, I think, yeah, this lad used to play for Liverpool. Yeah, we signed him. I keep thinking it's Roberto Ayala. That's um, the Valencia centre-back, isn't it? Who I think he might have even retired by now. Um, unfortunately, yeah, he was not really good enough for Liverpool, but he's pretty decent on this. He's very, he's a bit of a leader. You know, he's a commanding centre-back. He will... Um, He's done a job for us so far, and you'll see. Not just not been amazing since we've conceded a lot of goals, but you know he's done okay considering what we have. Then this one was a bit of a mistake. <laughs> um, this is Serdan Mialovic, and unfortunately I couldn't actually get a work permit for him, but I still signed him for free. What I'm probably going to do is if I still can't get a work permit for him, I'm probably just going to have to sell him. I've sent him on loan to one of our affiliates, Valencia, or I, th I think I just threw him out on loan somewhere. And I mean, he's not a look. He's not. He's a good player, Mialovic, but I can't actually use him. <laughs> uh, he was a free transfer. I just found him floating around in the um, expired contract section, and I just scouted loads of different players. And this guy, you know, looked pretty good. And it's a shame, really, because as I say, I can't actually get a work permit for him. And there are sometimes where you just can't get a work permit. That's it. You, there's nothing else you can do. But it's out of your hands then. So yeah, that was a pain in the ass. This guy, though, has probably been my best signing. This is Mario P uh, Pasalic, or Pasalic. Um, I'm quite, I've never been sure how you pronounce this. Is there a way of knowing how you pronounce the uh, C? Is it a harsh C or is it a light C? Please, um, any Croatians or similar, please let me know. Um, but this guy's really, really good. He is um, currently at Chelsea. And, well, they've made 200k on him, <laughs> I guess. Uh, not that it matters, but I don't know why they sold him, because he's very, very decent, this player. Um, he's just very positive and you know he he's not outstanding in any way but he gets a job done and he fights to the end and he one, he does one thing which I like and that he never gives up there are players and I see this constantly in the match engine where players will and I'm not blaming the match engine at this this is just how players work by the way <laughs> I'm not blaming the match engine there um, where they'll lose the ball and they'll sit there for like three seconds and it's like move do something Arr! you know you just want them to get up and chase the ball back. And that's what this guy does. He's really good. None, none of his stats particularly jump out. I mean, you know, okay, he is a, he's got good strength there. Because he's got good jumping reach. He just has generally all-round pretty decent stats. You know, if they're all really light green, you're onto a decent player, I think, especially for a mid-table Premier League team. Here's another guy that I found floating around the uh, contra expired contracts, I think. Um, this is Caramel Amra El. Oh. El Amrani, I better get used to saying that because he could potentially be a, one of the best players in the world. And no, I'm not even kidding. He's 16, he's Moroccan, he looks rapid. <laughs> I mean, last 16 acceleration already, he could genuinely evolve into something pretty cool. Um, I think he, I'm going to send, I'm gonna have to send him on loan. I, I generally don't like to send 16 year olds on, out on loan because uh, it gives them time then to bet themselves into england as a country you know learn the language you know and obviously it'll help as well if obviously if he can't settle if he obviously gets homesick or whatever which does happen um then obviously i can find out a lot quicker we can sort it out we can send them on out on loan for a couple of years and then maybe when he's matured maybe when he's a better player whatever he will then come back I'm not saying that will be the case with this guy but he um oh sorry no he wasn't expired he wasn't expired contract i 
uh, found them from here. I just go around loads of different uh, clubs and things. I think my scout was um, scout was going through France and he found them, so that was pretty handy. He always comes up at the start. Do you want me to scout uh, Liga? Do you want me to scout La Liga, the Bundesliga, the Eredivisie? Uh, loads of different ones. So that's why I was able to uh, find him. But yeah, that, that, that's why I don't generally like to send 16 year olds on loan either, as say gets them used to the culture and things. Then, then when maybe they hit 17, that might be the ideal time to send them on loan. So next season he will be going somewhere. Uh, this is now January. In fact, he was also signed in January. Uh, but Jack Butland has just come in. I need a young-ish, not necessarily a replacement, but an up-and-coming player for Brad Guzan. I don't know how long Guzan has left. He's good. Very, he's very good, Guzan. In fact, he's excellent. It's just that. He is now getting to an age where I think, okay, I'm going to need his replacement to come in instantly. I'm going to need an instant fluid replacement. That's what Butland is. Nor could I turn him down for 725k. You know, I had money and I thought, this is perfect. I also generally don't like playing with two goalkeepers. I might have to rotate them a bit, but hopefully it should be a flawless transition once Guzan eventually goes Fingers crossed that he uh, stays for another couple of years, though. Or obviously, you know, I'll just rotate them, I'd say, if all else fails. This guy, I was really unsure whether to get him. This is Harley Dean. He plays for Derby or played for Derby at the moment. Looks like he's at Brentford in real life. Uh, but he is basically just a rotation option. I needed centre-backs in January. I really needed them because our defence was just so poor. And um, he was the best I could get. I'm at a really difficult stage in the game at the minute. And this... This is why I was really a bit on a downer with Villa at the start, because for me, this is the hardest part of the entire game. Especially, you know, if you, unless you're a mid to, oh, uh, sorry, unless you're a top four team, this is really difficult because what you have is you have all these players from, say, real life. Now, say, I'll give you great examples of the ones that I found, like Tevez, Lalana, Rooney, you know, these type of players who are good players, but in real life now, at the start of the game, they're approaching or are at their peak. Now, you get five years in the future, they're getting released by their clubs. They're not as good as they once were, but they're still very good. So you go to them and you say, would you like to play for me? No way. And you know why? Because their wages are still far too high. These are 33, 34, 35 year old players who demand the wages of their sort of 28 year old selves. They're not worth it. And it's a really difficult time because you've got all these regens coming through who aren't quite the finished product yet. And, you know, you, you, you can't, you need players now. You need someone proven talent. But, and you're in this really awkward middle ground where the players that you know are too old. Now, they're not going to do it for you, but the youngsters coming through are still too young. So you're in this really awkward middle ground that usually starts to get a lot better at the start of the 20s. You know, so we're nearly there. But I always say from about 2017-ish to about 2020, it's really difficult part of the game. This is probably the hardest part. Anyway, just a little note on that. Um, this guy, I can't believe this guy didn't have a club. I was stunned when I found him in, his exp in the expired contracts. This is Nathan. <laughs> Nathan? <laughs> I don't know. If you're watching Benji's save, you'll know there are some marvellous Brazilian names. And here's another one to add to the collection. He's worth 15 million. I signed him for a free. Look at those stats. He's unbelievable. I will need to train him as a striker or just better his midfield um, role here at the moment because that isn't really suited to my playing style. I just like to play the usual 4 4 2. I know unadventurous and a bit boring, but um, you know, it, it works for me and it always has worked for me. I think once I get Aston Villa to a bigger stage or I get to a big club, I like to push the uh, wingers out up to sort of inside forward slash, slash attacking, proper attacking wingers. But until then, I just have the usual 4-4-2. Um, so yeah, I'm going to have to train this guy as something else because that doesn't really fit. But what a player this lad could be. He could be awesome. And lastly, uh, Jarrett Hendricks, who I'm going to nickname Jimmy for obvious reasons. Um, I've been looking at this guy. The game had the audacity to describe this guy as a panic buy because it was on deadline day. I've been scouting this guy since the summer and I had to sign him for 7 million and PSG, uh, PSV simply would not budge. I've been just for ages scouting him and scouting him and scouting him and the scouts are going, this lad's really good, this guy could be a really quality right back, uh, left back for you and as soon as I sign him, yeah, he's alright. 
So I think um, you might see something very similar to that in next in the next video as well, potentially, or the video after that, sorry, in about a year's time. Uh, but that's the signings I've made. So let's go through the competitions and see how we've actually done here. Oops, I know schedule, sorry, I meant schedule. Take it back. So um, not the greatest start, but then again, it wasn't a particularly easy start. 2-0 defeat to Arsenal at the Emirates. Um, didn't particularly have a great start <laughs> in this game. Um, Richings, my, well, I guess you could describe him as a wonder kid. I don't know, he's 20 now. Really good player, but, you know, he didn't have a good game here. And I was a bit concerned at that point, thinking, ooh, is that going to stagnate him a bit? You know, because I always like to say, get off to a good start. If you win your first game in Football Manager, like, say, so you load up a new game, and I always like to win the first game of the season. Admittedly, at the Emirates, not the easiest of tasks, but I always think that's a good platform. If you win your first game of the season, in particular the first game of your save, then it's really handy. But as you can see, we got a lot better as the game went on. 2-1 um, against West Ham. This was really annoying because we had two away games. We didn't play a league. Well, in fact, we had three away games. We didn't play our first league game till the middle of September at home. That's not, that That shouldn't be happening. <laughs> uh, but I'll show you these goals. Matroglu here, 89th minute, check it out. Andy Vyman obviously scoring against us all club. Check, I'll show you this. Ashley Barnes, really good player, Barnes. I've been really impressed with him. I knew he was good from the championship, but I was wondering if he'd make that step up. And um, he has. Uh, just a quick note on the uh, latest update, if you will. Um, I think or as of the update, as of you know the current game, as of the date of uploading this video, uh, really like it, really like it. Now I feel that this is now at last balanced. It feels like they've done something, and it feels like a good game. The match engine doesn't feel, I don't want to say dodgy or anything, but you know it feels like I'm not. I don't feel as if I'm battling against the computer to sort of steady the ship, and you know. Does just feel like a glitch could happen at any moment? None of that. It feels balanced. It doesn't feel like the game um, has any sort of bias towards the home, you know, or outwards bias. And I'm actually really impressed with it. <laughs> actually, I've got to be honest that this is the most comfortable I've felt playing a football manager since FM13, the later days of FM13. So, um, good job, SI. <laughs> Finally, you've done something right. So, yeah, Matroglu there with a little header, a little flick on. And actually, that got us our first three points. Was not expecting that at all. I would have been very happy with the points. But yeah, I can't believe we played three away games. I mean, admittedly, we got Drew at home against Leighton Orient here, which um, we won in extra time. I'll show you this guy who got two goals here. This is uh, Jeff Brown. I think I may have shown you him before. This guy looks really good, and you'll start to see a bit more of him as the season goes on. Very handy, good little youngster, as you can see here. There's his little stats. I mean, six starts, admittedly eight uh, sub appearances, but seven goals. <laughs> That's in the first team, I want to point out. Uh, 2 2 at Goodison Park. Not the worst result in the world. Mark Wilson here. I think we, in fact, yes, we did. We came from 2 0 down. So, you know, 2 0 down, get a point. You can't argue with it, I don't think. As you can see, we got absolutely outplayed in possession. Everton have a lot of really good players like Thorgan Hazard, uh, Jordan Rhodes, who is beyond dangerous. If I had to pick one of the most overpowered, I mean, to call Jordan Rhodes overpowered is very harsh because <clears throat> he is a very good player. But, you know, he does play like a worldie sometimes. Guzan, ugh, not great there. Um, so, yeah, Thorgan Hazard, Kevin Morales is also very good. Leighton Baines, all these great players, Everton. So, they're the very handy um, team. You know, I guess at, at their job also came up, I think, at some point. Uh, obviously, I would never take it. Just to point out, I think if I wasn't a Liverpool fan, I probably would have taken it. Um, in fact, I probably would have been Everton two or three times because I think they're a, the perfect club to take over. And fantastic free kick there from Mark Wilson. Yeah, if I had to recommend the team, I know it sounds crazy, but if you're not a Liverpool fan, try Everton. You know, the good team. Good team. I, even I'm not going to deny that. Um, we've got a 1 0 victory against QPR. Uh, who scored here? Doesn't say. Glenn Johnson. Yes, I know Glenn Johnson. That's the last time you'll probably see him with an 8 rating. Because uh, after this, he went, ah, there's an own goal. That's why. <laughs> uh, I'll show you this. Um, Daniel Ayala there with Man of the Match. You can start to see putting in some pretty dominant performances. QPR are always one of these really annoying teams that seem to... Look at that. I mean, how lucky can you get? 
but I'll take it. You know, it's not as if <laughs> not as if it matters. Um, but yeah, keep on one of these dodgy teams that I hate playing. Plucky performance against Man City. Unfortunately, Aguero there. Uh, we are actually leading for eight seven minutes. Unfortunately, Sergio Aguero scored the winning goal. We did more than enough to deserve a point in this, in my opinion. Pass uh, Pasalic here with a great performance. Baker again, another he's another good player who punching above his weight considerably. Uh, he played Reading at the Badeski. Excuse me, and uh, Jeff Brown scoring again. Uh, Shea Ojo there getting one back, but Matthew Richings finally starting to score. As you can see, not in terms of shots, we're not. Well, Brad Guzan clearly having a good game there, but as you can see, we don't have a lot of possession. We generally don't try to dominate games unless it's at Villa Park. Uh, unfortunately, 1 0 against Derby, who are, as I say, a decent team. Now they're firmly established, but then check out these three great results 2 0 against Spurs. Don't forget how good Spurs have been over the last few seasons. Uh, Bakuna scoring, and who else? Uh, Ashley Barnes again. Jack Grealish this time. He's really come on this live uh, the last few years. Chelsea are really interested in him. As you can see, this point's not to be able to join Chelsea. This won't become anything. I've always, always get worried when you see this because usually it does mean that your player wants out at this time. That thankfully we're doing well enough for him to be happy. Palace two one. Ashley Barnes scoring again. And uh, 1 0 at the DW Stadium against Wigan. Brad Guzan not particularly having a great game, but it doesn't matter. He kept a clean sheet. Uh, unfortunately, we got Drew at the Emirates again. And Daniel Ayala not having a great game, as you can see. Uh, Matthew Richings again, pretty ineffective here. Massive pain because I thought we could have done pretty, you know, a pretty good job here in the Capital One Cup, but we hit the board's request. Again, can't argue. 3-2 three, uh, three, at Stoke. So we managed to get uh, two Riching goals. Uh, and Jack Grealish with a goal. Pasalic, unfortunately, scoring an own goal. But, you know, people have, again, have always brought up the idea that there's been too many own goals in this. I, I can see where people come from. I mentioned it before when we were at Newcastle. I don't think it's too bad. Uh, it's 4-2 at Anfield. Just the fact that Riching scored two goals at Anfield, I'm pretty happy with. Wilson not having a good game. Bakuna not having a good game. He can be a real fuse, Bakuna. He can really light the game up at times. Do enjoy his performances when he turns it on. 2-1 at West Brom. Another one, again, Grealish and Riching just starting to see the established players, you know, really take hold of this. 2-2 two, two at Old Trafford, check this one out. Uh, free, uh, they've got Carlos Fierro, <laughs> I know. Uh, we were actually winning twice. Again, Jack Grealish, he's a bit of a big game player, as you can see. Again, not having too many shots, didn't have a lot of possession, but we're playing better than the team overall. And there's Ayala at the, at the far post. Uh, getting his first Aston Villa goal about time as well because um, <laughs> his performances certainly have warranted one. But this is Manchester United. You can't ever live ever live with them <laughs> unless it's been managed by David Moyes. Carlos Fierro is, well, Carlos Fierro. Another one, we've managed to take advantage of two set pieces there. Nathan Baker with, well, looks like a flick on almost. Uh, but it's gone in anyway. Um, but yeah, Carlos Fierro is always one of those players that Everyone says to buy on FM. He's he's been that way since Christ FM twelve, FM eleven even, um, and yeah, that was a bit of a pain in the ass. Maybe Guzan could have done a bit better, but still, I can't be disappointed with a point at Old Trafford. Uh, then we lost four two to Chelsea again. We got two goals against Chelsea. I'm not overly disappointed by that. Okay, we should have should have done better. Uh, no, Dicko is awful. He's not very good at all. He hasn't scored. I don't think he's got one assist in the league. Yeah, not great. 2-0 uh, at Southampton. This was a really good performance. This one was... This is where I started to realise, oh my God, we might actually have a decent team here. You know, it's like maybe this isn't the team that I brought up from the Championship. Maybe this is a an actual better version. And Pasalic there, he's, as I say, he's been really the cog in this team got his first goal there as well a lovely finish he's not really a goal scoring midfielder he's a box to box player so um, you know he's not going to score 10, 15, 20 goals a season he will maybe get 4 or 5 at lucky but that is a peach Jeff Brown that's a first league goal for Jeff Brown that could be one of the goals of the season I'll show you that one again because I'm absolutely in love with it what a goal this is I could, I could just watch this all day Watch it again. There's Brown. 
Uh, loses the ball. Okay, he lost the ball there, never mind. <laughs> but he gets it back, sees the keeper off his line. Boom. What a strike from Jeff Brown. This lad is spit special. Uh, unfortunately, this was one of those games, 3-1 against Swansea, where the game was like, nah, you're not winning. You're just not going to win it. He had a good performance there, and then we follow up with that. So, we well, yeah, honestly, I, I honestly think this is one of those games where you could probably quit and redo the game like 20 times and you still wouldn't win because it's just one of those dodgy horrible games where maybe your, your team thinks the Bertie big bollocks and you know they're all on a high thinks they can take on anyone and then you need one of these but i don't know i just it was just one of those games yeah you just we all get them you know where as hard as you try you're just not going to win the team will just beat you in some department that you haven't identified uh, well, happily, we did bounce back very quickly, though, with a 3-0 thumping of Reading. And we're on a really good run here, well, mostly, <laughs> uh, as we beat Leeds 3-1. So that was the big six-pointer, I suppose, if we were at the bottom, but or two big six-pointers, I should say, um, since, since we played the two promoted clubs back-to-back -back at home, and we completely demolished them both times. Richings there with two goals, Grealish again chipping in, and then went back to St. James's Park the first time back. And, well, we scored three, but we also kind of conceded five. Ashley Barnes with two. Uh, Grealish again scoring. He hasn't actually had that many goals, believe it or not. I know it sounds like a lot to say, Grealish scores, Grealish scores. But he's really starting only to push on lately, sort of from about middle of October, maybe November. Time. But as you can see, this is where the defence start to let us down. Uh, I want to introduce you to this young man as well. This is Bill Carter. He looks really good. Um, his performances have been pretty decent. Like, technically, he's not great, but... His heading should be a bit better and his marking should be better, but he is 18. There is time for that to develop. His physicals, though, are very good. And he's nearly... Well, it's not, he's not nearly there at all. That's a lie. <laughs> uh, he is, he's showing a lot of good potential, though, and I like the look of him. Incredible win here at the City of Manchester, uh, Manchester Stadium. Jeff Brown with two goals, again, showing how good he can be. He looks awesome. They have Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain. They have Bernard. They have Yaya Torre still. How old is he? He's 35. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but there is Marnek Vermeil. Sorry, I keep thinking that's an, that's an I. It's not. It's, it's, a, it's, an, it's an L. I'll start that one again. Marnek Vermeil with a 91st minute goal. I'll show you this one because I won't show you them all. We'll be here all day. Uh, Joel Matip there. I've not heard of him personally. He wasn't very good. They brought back Nastasic. Uh, Nastasic. Grief, that's difficult to say. But as you can see, Bouncing around, 91st minute. It's a crazy game. It was just back and forth constantly. Um, unfortunately, we played Derby, and to be honest with you, I wasn't too bothered by the cup competitions. As you know, I wanted a good run in the league. Uh, one one at QPR again, a dodgy club. Not again, not crowning ourselves particularly in glory here with um, defence nor attack really, but I'll take it. 3-2 uh, against Everton. Uh, Dean, unfortunately, scored a own goal on his debut. It was very unfortunate, actually. just bounced off him. Uh, but Barnes, again, he'd been out with an injury for a few months. That's why he, he, um, you didn't see him for a while. But he got two goals. Uh, and, uh, again, a nice win at Ever against Everton. So, I'll take that. Fortunately, we couldn't follow up. Uh, I couldn't do a double over West Ham as they, unfortunately, beat us at 1-0 at Villa Park. Grealish knocked in it on this time. Not his day. Kind of look to your big players to win your games like this. And then we just trounced Wigan 4-1. Mark Wilson with two penalties, that is. Uh, and Ashley Barnes scoring again. As you can see, he's very, very handy, Barnes. Uh, I'll show you then our squad and how, you know, where the goals have mostly come from. If it wants to... Okay, there's no goals, apparently. Let's add that in. <laughs> I don't know why it's uh, showing me that stats. Uh, goals. Is it on here? Hang on. Oh, sh... Austria, yeah. In case you don't know, Ashley Barnes is Austrian. <laughs> okay, he's not actually there. Very well. Um, never mind. What I'll do instead is, and I don't want to really want to waste your time, what I'll do is instead is I will go on the league, click on the right tab, there we go, I will show you the general position of the goal scorer. So, but we're already there, top goal scorer at the moment with 17. Sheller with 14, Costa with, uh, sorry, 15, Costa with 14, Storage there on 11, as if he's fit to play ever. Hazard on 11, and there's Barnes, level with Cadrado and Balotelli. 
with 10. Richings not far behind either with 9. Grealish with 8 assists. So, you know, it's the big game plays. The Grealishes, the Richings, the Barnes, uh, the Ayalas. You know, they're doing really well at the moment. Yes, they're not top draw quality, but they're very handy plays, you know, to have. And I think I've done decent so far. So, um, that is the current state of affairs. Um, I'll show you my tactics real quick I know, as well. I know a lot of people have been asking... This is generally, this is how I lined up last time. It is, as I say, but, uh, just bog standard 4-4-2. Uh, Barnes plays as a defensive forward. That's why he's a bit further back. And Richings plays in advanced. Um, in terms of the instructions I have at the moment, I have retained possession on. To be honest with you, I I, I mean, I, I change these on the fly all the time. I I can have like three instructions on sometimes. I can have 13 instructions on sometimes. It just depends what the situation is. But these are the ones I start with. I always start with retain possession. I always like to whip the crosses in. Look for the overlap I almost always have on. Just because I just, th I just think it's worth it. The flanks I'm, I like to play up wide. Especially when you have two quality wingers in Lennon and Grealish. Particularly in Grealish. I didn't always have the tempo on much higher. But for me, we always seem to play better when it's on. So And get stuck in. I don't know. I think I've just left that on. And I've just stuck with it since. Uh, Nathan has only one played one game down here. He hasn't actually been able to show what he's made of yet. He's, as you can see, not match fit. So that's why he's not in the team. Sometimes when he plays, though, I think I will have to do this. <clears throat> Swap Barnes and say Riching starts up front with uh, with uh, Nathan in there. And um, that would pretty much be it. Matroglu, as you can see, hasn't really kicked on. He is simply not my type of player. He's slow. He's unworkman like and he's boring <laughs> you know he doesn't do a lot um for the team and i like players that are quick that move around the pitch and that is everything he's not so there you go finances also very quickly i know a few people have been asking about that we're actually making profit most months with the exception of january and uh i think august or september uh we actually make a lot of profit as you can see you look at that Ah, at one point, the balance there was £46 million. Pounds. Sorry, yeah, 46 And it's not really risen back up to then. That was at the start of the summer. Obviously, we're also the money coming in from um, being promoted. But still, you know, financially, we're actually in a really decent position. And uh, that's going to do it for me. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, give the video a like if you want to see more. And uh, I'll be back with the uh, end of season update. So cheers for watching. Bye-bye for now.